<laughs> oh, what a good time we have. Okay. Ready? Let's take Go. a deep breath. Okay. Get into the place to help people relax and feel God's presence. And put your little stuffed animal <laughs> down. <laughs> okay, thank you. Welcome back to the Christian Meditation Podcast, episode 67. Do not let me be put to shame. Guided Christian Meditation on Psalms chapter 25, verses 1 through 5. So I work as a hospice chaplain, and I've also worked in the ICU, and my purpose in making this podcast is to help you find more peace in your life and be changed and improved by the Spirit of God. So our meditation today will consist of six main elements. A guided relaxation, a reading from the Bible, meditation and reflection on that meaning, prayer asking God for guidance, contemplative silence, and then visualization on how to incorporate the messages which we receive into our daily lives. So we have our special guest back today. Go ahead. Hi, peeps. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's try this out. I invite you to find a place where you can sit comfortably for the next 20 minutes. As you begin, Notice your body right now. Notice any tension you have, but also notice positive feelings. Where do you feel more calm? What other feelings are going on in your body right now? As you begin to settle in and you find the rhythm of your breathing, I invite you to slow it gently. Allow each breath to come in slowly and easily, and as you breathe in, you can feel peace and calm entering your body. With each exhale, you can feel tension being released from your body. Try to focus on that actual sensation of that tension leaving your body. So breathe in with me now. Now breathe out. Now breathe in. Now breathe out. And this nice, slow, easy pace can help you to feel calm as we reflect on this scriptural message today. The purpose of this relaxation is twofold. It helps our bodies unwind. Many times we make our lives so busy and stressful that we don't offer ourselves opportunities to slow down. So let this be that opportunity for you. So there's a physical rejuvenation aspect. However, there's also a spiritual aspect in what we're attempting to do today. We want to make ourselves open to the spirit of the message that's found in the Bible. So as we read this scripture, our minds cannot be distracted. They can be open and free to receive the message that God has for us in this scripture. Continue breathing slowly, easily, and deeply and allow your body to release all of that tension Feel your body straightening out, relaxing, unraveling, and opening up. Perhaps you normally feel your shoulders hunched over, and now you begin to experience release of this tension, and your body begins to be straight. A 
allow the air to come all the way down into your stomach and to fill your body by using your powerful diaphragm to gently breathe all that fresh air into your body. All right, now that we're prepared in our body and our mind, let's read this scripture. In you, Lord, my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come to those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior and my hope is in you all day long. Reflect on the meaning of this scripture. What phrases or ideas stuck out to you as you listened to it? Spend several moments reflecting on that now. Now we'll be reading from the King James Version, the same scripture. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without a cause. Shew me thy ways, O Lord, teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Notice the similarities and differences and continue to reflect on this scripture now. What message is God sending to your heart at this moment? So this scripture makes an interesting connection between shame and trust. This scripture refers to shame three different times, and there's another time later on in the chapter. And shame can mean different things to different people, but it's often can hound us. All of us are familiar with this feeling. So many times I've heard people talk about guilt as though it's wrong. And the truth is that we, when we do something that's horrible or harmful to others, we may feel our conscience disturbed. And I don't think this is necessarily a bad thing. It's right for us to be directed to correct things based on our conscience. This can help us to be good to each other and to treat each other like neighbors, as Jesus would want. We should seek not to avoid any response of our conscience, but we should seek to learn from it as much as we can. We can search our hearts, honestly knowing that God wants us to improve, and then, with His help, become new creatures in Him. It's His Spirit that's guiding us. There is a flip side to this. When we are overcome with constant feelings of shame and it overcomes us. When we feel constantly burdened by overwhelming feelings of shame, this can be disruptive to our personal growth. I have a couple of friends who experience OCD and they feel shame for things that might not have even happened. So for example, they worry that they could have done something harmful to someone but didn't. These feelings are not the result of actual violations or their virtue, and this is somewhat different, and I think we all experience this to a lesser degree at some point. So there's a balance between legitimate guilt and this feeling of false guilt. So I think it's important that we learn as much as we can from this feeling and we don't run and hide from it. The great challenge is is determining the difference. The guiding principle can be growing in 
the Lord in love. Our goal is not to make ourselves feel good or even bad, but to conform ourselves to the image of Christ Jesus who is in us. When we feel the light of Christ speak in our hearts, we can listen and make course corrections that are needed. Then repent and trust in Him even deeper that He can make it right and that we can follow and as far as we can, we can make it right in this world. We can overcome shame by focusing, as the scripture suggests, on trusting in God who will save those who believe Him and follow His path. Please join me in prayer now. Holy Father, we ask now at this time that our hearts and minds might be guided to ways in which we can take this message, this scripture, and improve our lives by it, that we can receive in our hearts the light from Thee. Guide us to know in what ways we can respond to feelings of guilt that occasionally prick our hearts, that we can know whether to listen to them or we can know if these are temptations to distract us. Help us and inspire our minds that as we attempt to discern that we will be guided by Thy holy will. In this we say, in Jesus' name we pray, Amen. I invite you to continue in prayer now. I'll give you a couple more moments. Now that we've had an opportunity to relax, read from the Bible, and reflect on the meaning here, let us sit in contemplative silence where we are experiencing the feelings that are associated with this message and just experiencing the presence of God insofar as we are able. I'll give you a couple more moments. The last phase is visualization, and I break this down into two different parts. Number one is trying to find a way where we can encapsulate and explain the feelings, the insights, and the intelligence we've gained as a result of listening to this scripture. So spend a few moments right now trying to reflect and put it into words in your mind about what this experience was like for you.
And the second part is now that we've reflected and tried to put this into words, now I want you to imagine what your life can be like with this experience now as part of your life. In other words, if you had an insight about shame or guilt, imagine your life as though God would want it and live it as vividly as possible in your mind right now. I'll give you a couple more moments. All right, thank you for joining me. Before we get to the final question and the final reflection, I want to say thanks to Sue. She recommended this scripture as well. She uh, donated on Patreon. And so thank you very much, Sue, for that. If anybody else wants to um, make a recommendation of scriptures, I'd definitely be open to that in the future. So, uh, daughter, did you have any insights that you wanted to share with us about this particular scripture? There has been many times where I felt guilt and shame. Not very much shame, but more like, m more like guilt. But where I felt like guilt and... It wouldn't go away for like a really long time and it really hurt my heart to have to deal with it. It was super hard, but I got over it. How did you do that? I just waited it out. I felt it. I thought, I did something wrong. I know that I did it wrong, and I've asked for forgiveness, and God has forgiven me. And he does forgive us, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. And he loves us, and he wants us to feel better, and he also wants us to be better. Thank you for sharing that. That's a very tender thing. I appreciate that. And sometimes we don't get to control exactly how we feel, huh? Even though we've for asked forgiveness, and we feel that God may have forgiven us. We know that he's a merciful God. Sometimes it kind of lingers in our heart, huh? And that can be a little distracting too. But we don't need to be afraid of the feeling. We realize, well, we don't get to control this feeling, but we know that we've responded to it the way that God has asked us to, which is going to him and repenting and, and continually building our faith in him, huh? Yeah, I appreciate you for sharing that. Well, that's kind of what I wanted to share for the final thought. The final thought is, oh, the final question is, is there a difference between guilt and shame or just different kinds of shame? In other words, so I've heard some people make a difference between the words shame and guilt. And I don't know if English language justifies that, but I do believe there are two separate concepts. One is this idea of having our hearts pricked by something that we've done wrong. And I've heard people refer to this as guilt. And then the other is where we feel uh, inundated by feelings of lowered self-worth as though we are no good and we feel like we're constantly in the wrong where there's something wrong with us. And I've heard people refer to this as shame. Again, I, the language I don't think is as important as the two separate ideas. I think guilt is only as necessary as it brings us back to Jesus. And it brings our hearts back to eternally trying to improve the best that we can. Anything beyond that can be a distraction, and we don't need to worry about it. We don't need to carry that load forever. We can take the yoke of Jesus upon us, and his yoke is easy. He can take that burden. We can unburden on him. And I know if we do this, not only will we improve by continually trying our best, but we can also realize the blessings that come through the cross. 
and through the power of Jesus. So if you find yourself struggling with shame or guilt or whatever you want to call it and it's disturbing you, go to God and prayerfully ask Him for guidance. Ask Him in what ways you can make tangible changes. Ask Him for forgiveness. And then also ask Him to carry the weight of your shame. And He is mighty to save and He can do that. And I know that if we do that and if we reflect on this in peace and love, these feelings can be minimized inside of us. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Any other thoughts? Mm, not really. I don't know how I'm going to condense all that into one podcast. <laughs> this one might be a little longer, but that's okay. It's 24 minutes. Yeah, I know. I didn't even put the silences in yet. But we did have a lot of laughing and joking and yawning and whatnot. You know, so, okay. All right. Most of the yawning. Mostly yawning. Yeah. Right. I love you.